Hey guys, how's it going? So, I want to do a quick video today to go over the the basics of feather grooming in Yeti. Now, I really mean when I say the basics, I'm not going to go particularly in depth on any topics to do with um, feathers, especially texturing, just because every single aspect of feather grooming is uh, complex, um, at least to get to like a technically proficient level. So for now, I want to do a relatively brief video, hopefully less than 30, 40 minutes, uh, just to go over the basic workflow and the the most generic setup I can give that will help you with grooming uh, what are called contour feathers, which are basically body feathers. Uh, wings, again, are their own kind of pit uh, to, dr to drop down into. So we won't be going over that. Maybe a you know, future video, I'll, I'll spend some time practicing wings and we can we can do something later. But for now, yeah, I'm just going to go over how you'd create a groom like this one. Um, again, we are using Yeti. Uh, Yeti is currently one of the stronger tools for feather workflows. It is quite easy to use, uh, comparatively speaking. Um, but there's still a lot of common mistakes that we'll hopefully get into today. But yeah, so first off, and this may sound stupid, but what is a feather groom? And I ask that for a genuinely sincere reason. Um, Feather grooming, the reason it's so complex, is it's a groom of grooms. Each individual feather, functionally, is its own groom. Its fibers being instanced onto a geometry, in that case a spine or a rachi of the feather. Now, you create that individual feather, but then you also need to create a groom using that feather. So it becomes a groom of grooms, which makes it a nightmare to work on, and especially with texturing workflows, it like it's so hard to know where to start. Um, Again, Yeti does make it quite easy, so let's get into the first step, which is feather templates. So let's just hide this guy. And I'm going to hide our preset groom. Um, and let's just go into Yeti and create a feather. Now, this is a feather template. And as you can see, it's not very fancy looking. It doesn't have tons of detail, but you don't need it to. Um, Again, Yeti, oh sorry, feather grooming is complex. So you don't need crazy beautiful individual feathers for a feather groom itself to look decent. Obviously, to make something photorealistic, you have to spend a lot of time on your feather templates, but a basic feather template will get you quite far. But let's just go over the the most basic things. I won't go over everything here, just because there's so much to cover. And to be honest, I find this sort of thing is something that's good to work with yourself, just experiment. Uh, but let's get into what this is doing. So first off, you can see there's kind of two structures happening here. We've got obviously the shape of a feather, which with very thick barbs, but we've also got this rectangle. Now this rectangle is a plane, uh, just a standard polygon plane that the feather is being deformed to. That becomes important with the general shaping of the feather, how it looks when you instance, and also this number of divisions. Now this gives you more or less geometry to play with. Uh, naturally it does affect the shape of the feather itself, but it's primarily an artistic like control in terms of actually deforming this geometry because we have many ways of shaping feathers in Yeti. Um, and when I say many ways, I mean two. We have uh, the profile here, which is controlling the length of the fibers, which obviously you can manipulate to get any shape you want. Um, over on the left is the root of the feather, and over on the right is the tip of the feather. But we also have the geometry itself. Now, I don't like to use both of these at the same time, but I'll for now I'll leave everything default just to show you guys. Um, we have this geometry, which if I press F8 to go into component mode, I can scale this and move individual verts and get an exact shape that I want. So if I just go in with soft select enabled, we can get an exact feather shape. Now, it is important that we don't really bend it forwards or sideways at all. Uh, I'll get to why once we get to the actual instancing step. Just be aware that, strictly speaking, this instance should be perfectly straight vertically, and it should go from 0 to 1 on the Y space. Now, just to quickly clarify what I mean by that, if I create a cube, I'll deselect the feather first, if I create a cube, and just move that so it's sat on the ground. So let's just go here. You notice the feather fits perfectly within it. You can actually see it, it's just about reaching the top there. It's because it is exactly one unit tall. Again, that becomes important once we start instancing this later. But 
just be aware that if you want to control your feathers using Grim, which you do, you want this to be 0 to 1 in the Y space. Again, if I showed a grid, you can see it's, cat, it's sat perfectly in the center. But yeah, so that's the number of divisions and the mesh control. That is, in my opinion, one of the larger things that is kind of un underutilized. You can change the shape of this mesh and it has a huge amount of control for you. It also makes the previews a little bit easier to read. Um, but let's move on from that for now. So the next step is barb detail. And that raises the question first, what is a barb? And then second, what does this do? So the structure of a feather fundamentally is you've got the overall feather, which is, as you know, called a feather. You have the spine or the rachi, which is the very strong kind of central pillar to every hair. If I just quickly, was it every feather? If I just do this, you can see the, the spine in the center there. So that's called the spine or the rachi. You've then got barbs, which are the kind of fibers that grow off of that. And then below that, you've got something that Yeti doesn't give you, which is called barbules. Uh, barbules are basically tiny little hooks that are on these that hold the feather together. Because you'll notice that feathers, when you look at them, kind of look like a surface more than hair. And that's because of the barbules. They're, they're tiny little hooks that hold every hair side by side to make sure that wind can't get through the feather. Otherwise, the you know, they might be pretty bad at flying. Uh, in fact, actually, if you look at uh, flightless birds, most of the time their feathers are very loose and broken apart. That's because the, the barbs or the barbules don't hold the feathers together. Uh, I'm not saying they can't fly specifically because of that. It's just a side effect. Um, but yeah, so that's the general structure of a feather. So barb detail then is how much detail does each barb have? Now detail translates to CV count. If you're familiar with grooming, you'll know what that means. It's just the amount of points along each hair. So the lowest you can go is five. The highest you can go is 15. I believe you can type bigger numbers, but you shouldn't. Uh, if we look at one very close up region, you can see there's an angle change happening here. As I increase that, it smooths out. So this is just the amount of CVs. It doesn't look like it's hugely important for this feather shape. However, as you manipulate the feather controls down here, you will find this does become quite important. Below that, you've got feather texture coordinates. Now this is something that I'm not going to get too far into, uh, but there's two options here, parametric and projected. They just change the way that the feathers UVs as in each individual feathers UVs are created. Um, that is a topic for a different day, but just be aware that this functionally creates something that works very well with ramps, and this creates something that resembles the shape of the feather itself. So you could paint directly over a photo of this to get an exact design. Uh, generally speaking, I leave this as projected because it is possible to create your own parametric UVs without too much difficulty. Um, so I tend to leave that alone. Profile, as I've shown you earlier, is the length of the barbs, which directly controls the shape. And then you've got your ratchet width and everything else down here. I'm not going to get too far into that. This is two things I want to quickly cover, or three, which is barb density, which is changing the amount of barbs, but also the width of the barbs. I do think that is quite an important thing to be aware of, is yet it will always try to make sure that these fibers aren't overlapping each other, just because that creates very strange uh, rendering artifacts. So increasing your density will decrease the width of the barbs. Uh, however, I think the default is too low anyway, so I tend to set this a little bit higher. Uh, the next one I want to talk about um, is, I believe, barb uh, curvature. So the reason I want to talk about this is it is just a shaping feature. However, I think it's important to put in a basics uh, video just because it adds curvature. So I don't like the way it adds it. Uh, if I just isolate this, and look at it from below. Now, this to me is borderline unusable. Um, and the reason I'm making a point to say this is because although it adds depth to your feathers, it's really important to keep this to a minimal, at least in my opinion. And the reason being is because when you shade this, you get a really sharp shadow and reflection line in the middle. You'll see one side is really well lit and one side is really dark. You can see the line here, uh, but it shows up even stronger when you've got um, a shader on there. Um, if the Yeti devs ever see this, please, please, please make it so the barb curvature curls the barbs to make less of an M shape like this, like they currently do, and more of a N or U shape. That'd be a lot easier to work with as an artist uh, and would create less visual artifacts. Granted, I'm sure there's a reason they've done this, but maybe just having a different control to do that. 
Uh, but that's the only of these controls I'm going to go through because I think it's worth you just spending time experimenting with these and honestly it will inflate the length of this video by like 10 minutes to go through all these. But just play about the ramps, the only thing you need to know about the ramp is obviously the height of it is the amount of the effect and left to right is the root to the tip. So if we just use barb, barb curvature, I've set it so the root is super round and then the top is super flat just by doing that. So. That's all you need to know about the ramps. Uh, you can add and remove points. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, I leave most of these pretty default, to be honest, because uh, there are ways to kind of change these after the fact in a roundabout way. But yeah, so let's leave that alone. Um, oh, actually, one other side note to go into is barb length variation. This is another thing I'd love for the Yeti devs to adjust, but it works fine as it currently is, but not really. Um, basically, the length variation is a scale uh, operation, which is fine, but it does create overlap between barbs. So rather than kind of removing segments of each fiber to keep them parallel to each other, it just overlaps them, which means that adding even a tiny, tiny amount of this increases the chance of rendering artifacts where fibers are overlapping each other and the shader just doesn't really know what to do. And it shades more like a, a plastic surface than a hair. Um, so this is something that I tend to keep pretty minimal. Uh, obviously there are feathers where you need it, especially uh, what are called downy feathers, which are like kind of a under feather layer uh, that most creatures have to keep them warm. And they generally speaking are like this with tons of noise and all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Uh, but for now, we'll leave that alone. I'm gonna set that back to roughly default and let's move down. So I do want to cover the tearing attributes. So in a way, this is clumping. Um, this is telling you um, how much tearing is happening, how many tears are being created, and how big are those individual tears. Now, this comes back to the barbule thing I was talking about earlier. Um, tears happen when the barbules functionally just let go of each other. Uh, very heavily damaged feathers will have a lot of tears, sometimes very, you know, very few but very large tears, or sometimes hundreds of tears. It, it really depends on your reference, I definitely recommend checking it out. But this is just saying, you know, um, are the barbules breaking? And if so, that's going to separate the feather slightly and allow the feather to kind of bend in a much more unnatural way for flight, at least. Um, obviously for a flight feather, you want one uniform surface so that all the wind gets caught. Uh, having these tears allows it to kind of flap, which causes issues, um, you know, turbulence and that sort of stuff. But just be aware of these, it's kind of like a, a general clumping control. Um, all of this does get randomized by uh, Yeti when you instance the feather, which is a really nice little feature. Love that they've got that in there. Um, so yeah, just, just play about with all these settings. Again, I don't want to spend too long on these. Um, you do have some additional stuff up here. Uh, barb spacing, I tend to leave completely alone just because it, it acts almost as a counter to the barb density. It decreases the density and increases the width as you increase it, which I think is a very strange feature. Uh, probably because I'm not, I don't know how to use it, honestly. Um, but I'm sure there is a correct way. But I tend to leave that set completely default. And you've also got the barb starts, barb ends, and tip starts, the tip end. That's just saying where along the spine do the the barbs get generated. So as I move that up, they go up, which creates a really cool effect up here. And as I go down, they generate further down. And tip just changes where they point towards. So I can point them all towards the top or I can point them towards the root. It's up to you how you use these controls. Um, and again, your reference will change all of this. But yeah, so that's that's the general overview of a Feather template within Yeti. So I'm just going to quickly name this. I'm going to go into my Yeti utility group. I'm just going to copy paste the name of my pre-existing template. And let's just change the last letter to be B. So let's get back to our actual groom and I will very quickly walk through what this groom is doing. So let's hide you. So this groom is genuinely nothing special. It's very, very basic. Um, if you're familiar with Yeti, the setup will not look strange to you with the exception of one node if you've not done feathers before. So I have a groom, which is just um, fibers that are combed. One thing to be aware of with, oh sorry, strands that have been combed. 
Uh, one thing to be aware of with feathers is that intersections are much, much more visible. So you need to make sure that your guide work is very smooth. Uh, you don't want any of these feathers to be diving down between the others or any of these uh, guide curves. You really need it to be as simple as you can make it um, with you know very little crazy shapes happening, at least for most body feathers. Uh, but beyond that, this is a completely standard groom. Uh, do with the guides however you want, and obviously Yeti will handle the rest for you. Um, in terms of the actual feather setup, uh, so I've called this feather overview, but it is just a standard, completely standard Yeti node. Uh, I just selected a base mesh and went create Yeti node on mesh. If we go into our Yeti graph editor, we have um, down here, we have an undercoat groom, which is just some regular um, fibers and they are kind of grown the grow node is limiting their length so they don't overtake the feathers but this is something i quite like to add to my feather grooms at least when i've got the kind of budget to do that and not too worried about ram usage uh, up here we've got our actual feather groom um, but we'll be rebuilding this from scratch ourselves but it's all completely standard stuff which we'll walk through now so first off how do we actually get our feathers in to yeti because um, currently we have a feather template in our scene, but that feather template is not renderable, at least yet, just because we're only rendering our Yeti nodes, not our utility, as I like to call them, utility nodes, which are templates, grooms, all that sort of stuff. So we need to get our feather, uh, our feather template, sorry, into this Yeti node. The way we can do that is by going to the graph, and then in here we've got user variables, input objects, input grooms, and input guide sets. Now. Yeti devs, I would love it if you could add a separate section for instance geometry or feathers. Um, but for now, uh, anyone new to grooming feathers, let's just go into add objects and we can add our feather in here. So I'm going to go Yeti utility template B and grab this guy. So that's now in there. That's now available to be used within our Yeti graph. So let's start creating a basic groom. We have our import geo and we have our input groom. So I'm going to create a scatter, grow, and comb as you would with any standard fur grim because at the moment, this is a completely standard fur grim. There's no special treatment to feathers, at least at this stage. So let's grow all this and we have this. So something to kind of talk about at this stage is the workflow that we're going to use. So after this comb node, we're going to create a instance node. And what that instance node can do is generate a instance of a geometry at any point, or it can generate them along elements. So an element in this case would be a strand of fur or a fiber of fur. Um, so functionally what we're looking at when we look at these hair uh, fibers is the spine of the feather. Functionally, that's not actually what we're looking at, but it's the way I like to think of it. So this is where we can kind of figure out, okay, well, what flow do we want? What kind of length variation do we want? All that sort of stuff. You also want to think about things like uniformity. Generally speaking, feathers are fairly uniformly placed just because they're very wide surfaces more than they are hairs. So I tend to go into my scatter and just add a few relaxed steps, let's say four in this case. And that just makes it so that the feathers are more uniformly placed. Now, with the scatter node, something else becomes important, which is our render density of the Yeti node. So if we go into this render density, because we're going to be instancing feathers to these fibers, setting this does become quite important because as we increase this, we're going to get more feathers. It doesn't actually affect the feathers themselves. It doesn't make the barbs denser, but it does change the scatter node and that changes how many feathers we have. So this, if you've got this set to its default of 10, can result in very, very heavy grooms. Um, at least if you want to see them you know, in viewport with full density you definitely need to set this to a lower number. I normally set this to around two, um, just when I'm working with feathers. So I don't need to see every feather, but it's helpful to see most of them. Um, but yeah, so we then go into grow node. That again, it works completely as normal. We are just grooming hairs at this point. So let's actually get a feather onto these guys. So the way we can do that is by creating a instance node. So let's just move all these guys away. Because uh, these are the kind of pre-done template that I had earlier. Cool. So I'm going to create a instance node by going to create and instance, which is up here. And I'm going to plug the hairs into the first input. Now, the two inputs are what you're instancing to 
and what you are instancing. So in our case, we're instancing a feather, which we'll have to go into the input too. To bring in our feather, we just create a import node. Now this import node will have a feather dropdown just here, uh, which adds more confusion to the whole thing of it being an input objects, but then having its own import. Uh, Yeti devs, please fix. Uh, but we'll just set that to feather, and I'm going to select our feather template B, just because that's the one we made for this uh, demo. And I'm also going to save at this point. And yes, let's over it. This is the second take of this video. Uh, first take was far too rambly, if you can believe it. Um, but yeah, so this is now importing that. We can just drag this onto here. And this is going to create our instance. But before we do that, I'm just going to name this. So let's just go uh, feather uh, template B and just double click on the instance before we do anything because I just want to talk over the instance node at least the very basics of it because again much like all the feathers the instance node is a giant rabbit hole that you can dive into and lose yourself for weeks uh, I should know I have literally spent weeks learning the instance node and the many ways you can manipulate it to do what you want but I'm going to cover the basics for you guys um, the things to be aware of for a standard feather groom nothing too fancy so the first and biggest thing that we need to do is make sure that we set to elements because instance two points or elements um, changes fundamentally how the feathers are placed. So set to elements, it will instance one object, whatever you're importing in, in our case feathers, it will instance one of them per element it receives. So elements in this case would be a whole hair. If we set this to points, it's now going to instance a feather per point along the hair. So for every one of these, we'd have 10, uh, by default, at least 10 feathers per hair, which would be mental. Um, also, not particularly physically accurate because it means that feathers are generated above the surface, which makes no sense. So make sure this is set to elements. Uh, we then have alignment. Honestly, leave that as standard. It's very rare you'd need to touch that. Uh, variation is just going to basically pivot the hairs, like kind of twist them, um, but it's kind of given the whole fiber uh, it's giving the whole feather uh, the same amount of twist. Um, further down we have offset which is kind of pushing it um, before its instance it's moving the object itself. So with the feather template itself you remember that it was generated at the origin of the world so in zero on the grid and it went from zero to one on the Y. Using offset you could move things from away from the origin to the origin to match up with your hairs a little bit better. Personally that's a really bad workflow, um, just make sure everything is modelled to be settled on the middle of your grid. Scale is applied before it is instanced. Now that is really, really important. If your object is 1 in height, then when you place it down here, it's going to be 1 in height. If you increase this, it's going to uh, obviously increase the actual scale of the object. But why is it important that it's before its instance? Well, think of it this way. If we have feathers, a plane is a really bad example, but if we had feathers on a sphere, um, the feathers on the side of that sphere, if we wanted to make all the feathers wider, we'd be kind of screwed, right? Because they're on a sphere, they're all pointing different directions. So this operates before it's put on the feather, which means that these are the X, Y, and Z axis for what you're instancing, which means the feather width functionally is just this X axis here. Uh, we'll get more into this in a moment. Scale variation, I personally leave this at zero all the time. Um, as the name suggests, it just randomly scales each feather or each instance. Um, the issue with that for me is that it's a scale operation, which operates from the root, which means that it doesn't consider the shape of the feather, it just scales it down, which normally creates intersections. So if you want to add scale variation, you can use your grow node, however, we will get back to that. Uh, twist and twist variation will basically twist the hair from the root to tip. So the tip can be pointing 90 degrees to the left or to the right, and the root will be facing forward. Up vector, very important, we'll get to that in a moment, and axis of alignment, leave it Y, very rare you'd have to do anything else and not worth covering for today. So let's just quickly view what it's doing so far. And yeah, there we go, there's our feathers. Beautiful, right? Um, obviously not. It is generating a feather for every hair. So if you look at the root positions of these, just memorize where these are. 
and view this. They are generating in the same place, but they're the wrong size and they're not following the shape at all. So the shape is the easiest one to fix. What we can do is just go into Objects in the Instance node and just click Deform. Now that will now deform the um, instance to match the hair. However, we now walk into a new issue, which is the actual scale. Because the hairs are longer than one unit, these feathers don't actually match. You'll also notice that they've turned completely black, but that's not really an issue per se. Basically, that's just the normals of the feather are pointing the wrong way. Because uh, if we go here, you can see how we actually can see the feathers. Now, obviously we've got two issues there we need to fix. Um, the one that I always fix first is the most visual, which is the up vector here. Now, the up vector just tells us which way is uh, the feather facing kind of when it started. Like, how, how do we want this to be instanced along the hair? Because we're going from zero to one, um, with the feather template, this is set 0, 1, 0. If we set this to negative 1, it inverts the normals functionally. It's not technically doing that, but it flips the instance so that the um, the actual um, standard surface of that feather is facing the correct way for us. However, this is not how I like to set my up vector, because uh, this is fundamental issues. Again, on a plane, not even slightly relevant, it doesn't matter. But if this was on a sphere, this means that all the feathers are going to be pointing, like, regardless of where the surface is going, they're going to point up. So what I like to do is put the normal of the mesh in there, which is going to set our things back to black. So we can just invert the normal by pressing minus N. And now no matter what we put this groom on, the feathers will orient themselves to the geometry. This is an incredibly helpful little thing. I, I honestly is my favorite kind of feature. The up vector can do so much when you get into deep expressions. Um, I've been using this a lot to kind of auto generate guides. Up vectors are really, really helpful. Uh, but yeah, for as a general rule, I set this to negative N, which just means that your feathers are always oriented to face towards the mesh they're growing on, uh, or technically away from the mesh they're growing on. So. Now that we've done that, we still don't have the right feathers. Like if we look at these and then quickly go back to the hair, they're in the right place, but they're only going like one along the hair. You can see this guy here. So the reason for that is because it's instancing an object that is only one in length to a hair that is more than one in length. The, I think the hairs are three uh, centimeters long. So the quickest fix is to get your scale and at the very end, just type multiply by length. These now match with the length of the fibers. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly change the density that we've got here. Let's set you to 0.5, so it's a little bit more visible. So yeah, they now match the actual fibers that we put in, which is really, really great. Uh, it makes things very easy for us. So this now has a, a interesting secondary effect, which personally I quite like, which is as we change the length of our fibers, it also scales the width of them. So if I go into this grow node and just add a little bit of length variation, you'll see how the short feathers also get thinner. So they maintain the same shape. You may not always want this. Sometimes you will want the feathers to change only in length, but not in width. Uh, and that's also really easy to do. So I'm just gonna increase this a little bit, something like here. So if we go into our instance node, we're multiplying everything by length. So we're getting the width of the feather, multiplying it by the length, we're getting the length of the feather, multiplying it by the length of the, the hairs, and we're getting the depth of the feather, which is the z-axis, and multiplying it by the length. If we want the feathers to stay the same width, no matter the length of the fibers, we just have to get rid of that. And we can multiply uh, the y-axis by length, but obviously if it's set to one, we can just type length, because one multiplied by one is, is one. Um, so this now means that as we add width variation, or as we add length variation, the feathers stay the same width. So if you need that for a look of your groom, that's how you do it. Um, you can go much more in depth on this, I'm not going to, um, but if you want to, you can set up a width attribute to drive this, because this is, again, just the width of your feather, functionally, uh, with the default settings, so we can set this to be whatever we want, and it's going to scale the width of the feather for us. But for now, I'm just going to put this back to its default, and multiply it all by length, because as a general rule, that's what you want to use, uh, at least for a basic feather groom. 
do that. And let's just remove our length variation. So, something else that is important to touch on is the fact that these don't really look like feathers, do they? They look like geometry, and that's because currently they are. If you remember back to the beginning when we created our feather template, we had the feather and we had the geometry that we could manipulate. So for the sake of your computer's hopes and dreams and of surviving another year, it only really displays that basic geometry just because it's way, way lighter. Rather than displaying thousands of, of bobs, it can display 10 polygons. Uh, but that's not always what you want, uh, especially if you're using profile to shape your feather. Again, I personally, in my own work, like to set profile to be like one at every position and then just shape the mesh itself. But if you want a better preview, you can just go to display on the Yeti node and then in feather display style, set that to full. It's now growing the full feathers and you can see how our tears are randomized per feather. So these are too strong. We can quickly go back and fix that. So let's just go to feather template B set you to 0.3. There we go. You can see how that's changed. It's also very performant. It's very, very fast. I'm quite impressed as to how they've done that. Uh, but you can see how these are randomized per feather, which is a really nice feature. It stops the, the visible repetition that you get. Um, I believe it's only really tearing that's actually randomized. Um, and obviously like the seed for the position of the fibers and the, the um, variation based things here, they all get randomized. But the things like density isn't really randomized or anything like that, but it's something that is a really nice feature. Um, but yeah, so where could we go from here? Well, there's a million places we can go from here, to be honest. Um, all of them make everything heavier, basically. Uh, we can add, obviously, you know, without making things heavier, we can add alignment variation to make sure that these feathers twist slightly. Uh, you know, they all point slightly different ways. That may not work with this set to negative N, uh, you would have to set this back to a regular. Um, you would have to set this back to a regular vector that's set. Um, but this this can get you some kind of twist. And you can also add variation to the feathers using the actual fibers we're instancing them to. So again, we're just instancing along these. So if I want a bit of shape variation, I can add a scraggle at this point. So there's something like here. Plug that in. Come on. There we go, just by here. And we can see how that scraggle is affecting the feather because ultimately we're only instancing along the um, the fibers. So any uh, change of shape the fiber has will be put into the feather as well. But this, this really won't take us that far um, just because the feathers themselves fundamentally aren't changing. Uh, we're just changing the shape of them right now. So if we want to get really granular and actually control the shape of the feathers, you know, start adding uh, extra details that really make it feel like a real feather. We need more control. The easiest way to get that is to convert the feathers from an instance to actual fibers, which gives us all our regular hair controls. So I'm just going to go to this instance node and create a convert node, which is just there. Now, before I do this, please take note of the fact that I have feather display set to proxy, which means that feathers are displayed only as these planes. So when I go into this guy, and set feathers to fibers and display them. This now has no effect, and that's because these are no longer feathers. They obviously look like feathers, but they're not. They're now individual hairs. These hairs have a ton of attributes. Um, and actually, it, it's a really helpful little thing that Yeti stores tons and tons of attributes on these hairs when you convert them. So if I right click on this, I go into attributes. We've got our feather param, feather part, feather u, feather v, and we also have parent ID parent S and parent T. Now these are uh, attributes inherited by the hairs that we instance it to. So things like the UV positions along the plane and then feather U and feather T or feather U and feather V, sorry, are the UVs of the individual feather. So if you wanted to put a checkerboard on a feather, you'd be using these attributes. If you wanted to put a checkerboard on the feather groom as a whole, so some feathers are black, some feathers are white, you'd have to use parent S and parent T. Now, that's all well and good, but obviously we don't know how to use that yet. So the important thing to remember is that at this point, it is just a hair groom. There's no special treatment. So we can add something like a scraggle and it gets applied to every fiber. Now we don't obviously want that. Um, let's say we wanted the, 
the roots of these to be super fluffy, but then the top of them to be nice and flat for, for flight or for nice kind of a surface feel like you get on chickens, for example, or most birds. We can use the attributes that we uh, had generated by the convert node and by the instance node. So I'm just going to go into my multiply here and go create a curve. I'm going to put that along feather underscore param, all lowercase. At the root, I want the strength of 1 with an interpolation of 1. And at 0.2 onwards, I want a value of 0 with the same interpolation. What that will do is mean it basically just masks this scraggle node to only the root of the feather, the first 0.2 of that feather gets scraggle. And I can add scraggle random, which operates on a per feather basis. So some feathers get less than others. Um, like you can see this guy here, it doesn't operate on a per fiber basis. Um, and you'll also notice that the, the spine of the feather itself is also being messed up by this. Um, that's something that I'll do in its own lesson because it's, it requires quite a bit of expression writing to start to get rid of that sort of stuff. It also kind of ruins the width. So the width for these fibers is maintained, but the spine width is lost at this stage because we've converted it to fibers. Um, but that's something to be aware of. You can go into here, you can create width nodes, although that will already be set by the template. You can just kind of, you know, change it afterwards if you want to. But yeah, so that's it for kind of the basics of feather grooming itself. Now, I'm not going to go into texturing as I said, but I will very quickly touch on shading of feathers. So all I'm going to do is create a, a standard hair material on this guy. So let's go to Arnold and standard hair. And then let's go into our Arnold render view. And with this standard hair locked in, let's just start a render. Now, this is shading exactly like all hair does, because functionally it is hairs. Again, I, I want to remind you, this is just hair at this point. Um, so all of these controls work exactly as you'd normally expect. You've got your melanin controls. You got things like melanin redness, melanin randomize. Um, I believe randomize operates um, per fiber. So each fiber or each barb, sorry, gets a different value. It's not operating on a per feather basis, um, which, yep, that seems to be what it's doing. Um, but obviously there's kind of a, a lot more to feather shading. One of the first things I like to do is remind myself that these are feathers and not actually hairs. So things like the barbules will mess up any uh, shiny reflections. Um, at least in most feather types, you do get shiny feathers, obviously. Um, but I tend to increase the roughness a little bit. And for most feather types, that helps it read like feathers. Now, one of the nice things that is set up by Yeti and Arnold out of the box is that it actually does support ramps on the hairs, um, which I, I personally find really, really helpful. So I'm going to go into the hypershade here and I'm going to graph this material. Now, this is the material we have in our feathers. If I create a ramp and make sure this is set to its default of V ramp, this will automatically work for us. So I'm just going to plug that into base color and I'm going to set melanin to zero, redness to zero and start a render. Now we can set this however we want. So I'm going to go into presets, go to rainbow and replace. And you see how the root of each barb is on the left and the tip of each barb is on the right. This, for most cases, will be enough for you to get some basic variation on your feathers. Now again, feather texturing is a very, very deep rabbit hole to go down um, just because it causes so many issues um, in terms of how do you arrange your UVs, how do you separate, you know, how does each feather get its own texture if each feather has like identical UVs in essence. There are ways to achieve all of that. However, you don't need it in most cases and it's too big of a topic to cover, especially since we're already at 38 minutes, 39 minutes exactly. So I am going to leave this here at this stage, um, but be aware you can get quite far without it. Um, this is a very basic, you know, I, I spent not much time at all, but this is just using the ramp and this got not too far away from chicken body feathers. Um, if you wanted to texture on top of this, there are ways to do it. Again, you'd be using primarily attributes. Um, but yeah, for now, that's where I'll leave that. I guess one additional thing to touch on, this goes for all of Yeti, but something that can be helpful to know about is if we go 
into here. So we have our attributes that we can view. But if we create a uh, shader node, um, which I always forget, you can't type in tab. So let's just do that. Plug you in here and view that. Uh, we can preview things like feather param. So I'm just going to go into here, type feather param. And you can see what that's doing. It's dark at the root and bright with the tip. We can do feather hue, which I believe has a space. Yep. You can see how that is a left right gradient. And you can do feather V, which is pretty similar. Uh, this is what the ramp is set to go to, uh, fun like by default out of the box, the ramp will go along feather U, uh, or feather V, sorry. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know, this, this is a way to kind of control things. You can also go parent um, T, if you want to see like a gradient, and that's picking up the actual UVs. So each feather gets a unique value, um, but the barbs all get the same values. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to leave that there. Um, I hope you guys have learned something from this. Um, it's definitely been fun recording this back to back uh, twice. Um, but yeah, at some point we will go and break these videos down further, do a video for templates, a video for the instance node, and probably a video specifically for feather width, um, and eventually texturing and shading, just because that is a massive rabbit hole that will be fun to go down, and there's really not much data out there for people to learn from. But for now, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, do let me know if there's anything wrong in the video, um, as it goes without saying, uh, I'm not perfect, and Yeti is something I'm still, relatively speaking, quite new to. Um, so if any more experienced Yeti artists are out there, or even less experienced Yeti artists out there, if you have a, a workflow for feathers that you want to share, by all means put that in the comments just for other people to learn from. It's always great to have more than one voice, the uh, last thing I want to do is mislead anyone. Um, and if you do have any requests, by all means, you know, put a little comment in there, uh, let me know what you want to see, or if there's anything I've explained poorly, I can always go back and revisit that for you. Um, but yeah, enjoy the rest of your night, guys, and I hope to see you in the next stream, whenever that happens to be. Bye, guys.